Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today's another AMA episode, that is, Ask Me Anything. I love to answer your questions, and if you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. This question comes from Vish in Ottawa. He says, as you know, I'm a longtime listener and fan of your podcast. In previous episodes, you mentioned the growing concern on the price increase of natural gas due to various global conditions. How do you perceive this in the light of the information contained in this article in Forbes magazine entitled, Could U.S. Natural Gas Prices Crash? Published on November 9th. Do you believe we will see the price increase that you talked about? Well, Vish, this is a great question. My discussion of natural gas prices was within a context. The author of the article is taking a slightly different U.S.-centric view of supply and demand. Everything the author says is accurate from a U.S.-centric perspective. Prices will fluctuate in the short term based on local supply and demand and the size of local inventories. As I've said before, the local price for natural gas is a function of transportation. Natural gas is incredibly inconvenient to transport. Approximately 10% of U.S. production is being exported in liquefied natural gas form through the seaports along the Gulf Coast, principally Corpus Christi in Texas and Lake Charles, Louisiana. Right now, the price differential between gas on the beach in Louisiana that is still within the terrestrial United States versus gas on a ship destined for Spain or China is at an all-time high. We're paying about $5.50 per million BTU in the U.S. for natural gas, and Spain is paying over $30 for that same million BTU. The cost to transport the gas from Louisiana to Spain is about $1.50, so the profit margins for those in the liquefied natural gas business are astronomical. When you look at new supply coming into the market, if and when it materializes, it can lower U.S. domestic prices, but it'll do very little to lower global prices. The article correctly points out that current export capability is running at 100% of capacity, which is exactly what you would expect when the profit margins are that high. Question is, if you're a producer of natural gas and prices fall, do you want to sell to the domestic market or do you want to sell to the global market? If they stay the same, do you want to sell to the domestic market or the global market? The answer is clear. You want to be selling in the global market. There's clearly way more profit to be made in the global market than domestically in the U.S. Now, Russia desperately wants to add a second pipeline under the North Sea. They supply Europe principally through a pipeline that crosses the Ukraine. Russia wants to grab market share and the sale of natural gas to Europe represents a significant portion of the country's gross domestic product. It's being argued in some circles that Russia is publicly stating that it's meeting all of its production commitments to Europe, when in fact, Russia may be holding back just enough to amplify Europe's price pain. The thinking is that if European consumers are experiencing price pain, they will put pressure on local politicians to support the Nord Stream 2 pipeline under the North Sea. The U.S. is capable of grabbing market share from Russia with liquefied natural gas infrastructure and putting the gas on ships. Russia doesn't want to lose market share or any geopolitical leverage within Europe, hence the desire to build a new pipeline. It's true that natural gas prices do affect most consumers, and the Forbes article took a very consumer-centric perspective. Many consumers don't care whether the U.S. is exporting natural gas as long as they don't have to pay too much for it themselves. In the U.S., the incentive is high to expand export capacity. Even if global prices were to fall to a more tolerable $13 to $15 range per million BTU in late 2022, as has been forecast by some analysts, when additional capacity enters the market, the price differential still favors investment in liquefied natural gas infrastructure. There's still a ton of money to be made by exporting natural gas and shipping it around the world. Now, this is a real estate podcast, not an oil and gas podcast. So the question is, how will elevated natural gas prices affect real estate and where? My personal belief is there's going to be continued growth in natural gas infrastructure along the U.S. Gulf Coast in order to increase liquefied natural gas export capacity. That means tens of billions of dollars in new projects and thousands of new jobs in a very small geographic radius. Those thousands of jobs in an area that has experienced a loss of housing due to two hurricanes in the past year. That's going to put even more pressure on developers to bring additional housing supply into the market. The current area needs about 9,000 units of additional housing just to meet current demand, and the demand will be even higher when additional projects come into the marketplace. The Forbes article tends to lump together oil and gas as if they're the same thing, which they're not. 
the Permian Basin in Texas produces first and foremost oil, and the associated natural gas comes along for free for the ride. See, natural gas is a cyclical market, and the prices will rise and fall in response to local supply-demand dynamics. There's no one global price for natural gas. There are many local prices all over the world. But there is a systemic mismatch between U.S. supply and global demand. And until more export capacity is built, the demand mismatch and the price disparity between the U.S. and the rest of the world will also continue. If you knew there was a local market with demand for another 9,000 units of housing, and if you also knew that that same market, there would be approximately $70 billion in new projects spent over the next decade to add liquefied natural gas infrastructure to that community, then investing in that housing market might be a good bet. And so while the Forbes article is completely accurate in everything they said, when I speak about natural gas, I'm speaking about it in a slightly different context. I want to thank you, Vish, for an awesome question. And for the listeners at home, have a great rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.